Good morning, uh, good early afternoon uh, to you. We are broadcasting here from the Zero Project conference. Uh, this is a fireside chat where we do interviews and small uh, couch sessions, and it's a great honor uh, to welcome Nick de la Hunt from South Africa. Nick, good afternoon to you. How are you? Hi, Wolfie. Good thanks yourself. Yeah, not too bad. Thanks you participated already in the in the sign language session this morning. Uh, but uh, we wanted to go dig deeper a little bit in the in the in the technology you have been developing recently. But why don't you start with a brief description of uh, of yourself, what you are, your background, and then we talk about the technology. Perfect. Thank you so much, and thank you for the opportunity to the SL Foundation, the United Nations, uh, the Zero Project team, you know yourself, and our viewers. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, yeah. So I run a company called Digital uh, in South Africa. Uh, we focus on disability empowerment, social innovation, and education, um, basically with the core belief that all business should impact and improve the human condition. Um, so yeah, we we focus on that space, and we're all about assistive technology. Nick, what what, what is your target group? Uh, you know, which part of the uh, of the population is it? The educational? Is it is it the workforce? Is it, is it organizations? Please tell us. It's both the the, um, the deaf community themselves and the workforce, as well as organizations. We are trying to bridge that gap between the two of them, um, creating a channel of communication that currently doesn't exist in South Africa. And how do you reach these people? I mean, what, what what's your modes of, uh, of promotion? How, how do you get this? You work with DPOs, with government agencies. How is this done? Exactly that. Exactly that. We work with uh, Deaf SA, which is South Africa's official deaf body. Um, as well as government departments, and then we we work with various deaf institutions as well, um, MPOs. Um, there's, there's there's numerous ones of them, and we also do research in the field as well. Um, I think towards twenty the end of 2020, we commissioned South Africa's first, and I know it's, it's I think it's a global first as well, um, a study into the purchasing power of deaf South Africans. Um, and it's a study we'd like to, to take global at some point to find out where people are spending their time, um, which organizations they're, they're, they're engaging with most, and then where they're struggling to communicate and engage with those organizations as well. So content that is in incredibly difficult to come by, and then you know the difficulty that these people experience in, 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 in engaging with these organizations. Nick, you are a former Zero Project AWD already. Uh, so tell us what has happened since you got the, the award. Uh, yes, um, that was in 2019 when I was awarded um, with Zero Project. Uh, since then, we've come leaps and bounds. And I think it was always going to be a natural progression for my app, uh, Finger Talk, which is the one that we that we spoke about in 2019 at, at Zero Project. There was always going to be a an evolved an, an involvement of this project into a translation tool. You know, the first project was a, was a a dictionary of sorts, and um, it was one way focused at educating people on sign language, but nothing was ever serving as a translation tool for organization co organizational content, making content available to people who are deaf in their in their terms, you know, within their mother tongue. And that was always going to be the next logical step. And since my presentation at twenty at, at Zero Project in 2019, I've garnered so much interest in this within South Africa as well as the international audience um, members who were at Zero Project as well, um, who were interested in this in this type of product and you know what it could offer the world. Um, so we've we've gone and built this entire entire platform, you know, with a mobile app that 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 does that translation. Um, we've built the entire business model and we've gone. We've gone as far as simply just needing to roll it out. So now we're just looking at rollout partners and we're looking um, at, at content um, producers that can join this platform so that we can roll this thing out to the public. Nick, tell, the, tell our audience a little bit about the technology, maybe in, in layman terms, because it's not, not everybody an, is an expert like you. Uh, just what, what, what is, is we sign it about? 100%. Um, so we sign it is a mobile application that translates uh, corporate written or organizational written content into South African sign language currently. It will for it will cater for all forms of sign language, you know, in, in the coming months. We're targeting a Q3 uh, international launch. Um, but basically what users do, they take a they take a mobile device, they or they take you know, they, they take the mobile app, they scan a QR code that accompanies a piece of content like terms and conditions for a contract or you know museum information or 
um, any in entertainment or labor law or any type of information that they, they need to consume. And they will then be presented with a, uh, with a sign language translation of that content, basically then understanding what it is that they are consuming in their terms. And the app is for free or is it a subs subscription model? How, how does the, the business model work? The app is 100% free, 100% free to its users. It's also, we're in talks currently with a, a one of South Africa's largest telecoms providers to try and zero rate the usage of the app as well. Um, in South Africa, data is very expensive. So what we're trying to do is make the app 100% free to those whose hands it is in um, by, by even reducing or removing totally the cost of data usage for this app. Um, the, the app itself will, will charge organizations to have their content made accessible and to host that content on the, on, on, on the platform. And how do you reach customers? What's your, your growth strategy? So we are using various social, um, social platforms to, to, to to reach the, the end user. So there's two types of customers. We have the organizational customers and then we have the end user customer as well. Um, the end users, we're using all, all deaf, um, you know, deaf community, social pages, um, all those, those types of communication channels to reach and get the, the, the app into the hands of the masses. But on the organizational side, we're targeting government first, so all government departments, as well as uh, state-owned enterprises, you know, people who do science outreach, um, any form of, of research really that educational outreach, um, you know, labor law, uh, anything basic conditions of employment, health, key health information. We're targeting those types of organizations first to try and get the, the, the key mass communication out there. And then from there, we are going to be targeting industry leaders in the insurance space, in banking, um, in telecoms, in, in retail, especially because retail is where we're finding a lot of our problems. Um, in South Africa, deaf people take on unnecessary debt due to signing contracts that they don't understand. Um, so definitely retail is one of our biggest, um, our biggest targets. But right now we're starting with government and state-owned enterprises. And Nick, how, how is the reception when you approach a, a government agency? I mean, they fall over backwards or how, how, how does this work? Um, so, <laughs> unfortunately, South Africa isn't as mature when it comes to accessibility. Um, you know, the way that that you are in Aust in Austria, for instance. Um, so there's still a lot of learning that has to happen. We have to educate government. We have to educate organisations. Um, the challenges we experience with government is how can they measure that return on investment in terms of the reach of that message. So the translation needs to be seen by users. And then on the private sector side, the challenge is, well, what is the financial return on investment, you know, for, 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 um, for taking up the service? If we pay you X amount of money, will it, in, would it improve our bottom line? So we do have those types of, of challenges, but they are coming around and we are in talks currently to do a big government rollout across multiple departments. So there, there is, there is buy-in. It's just about an education curve as well. And how big is your organization? Who does all this, uh, these sales calls and, and, and personal interviews and conviction? How is this done? <laughs> so the business side is taken care of by myself. Um, I'm also, I, so I also serve as the app developer, but I have a brilliant team that works with me. So I have people who are um, interpreters. I have content creators. I have you know, the script writers as well as the, the deaf signers that do that do the, the, the signing itself and the filming, and then we video edit that and place it onto the platform. Uh, so we have a great value chain of people who are, who are able to jump in on any project as we go. But most of the sales currently happens you know, by me. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that as soon as we start, you know, we, we, we start taking on some more business that I could scale the team a bit more um, to start making those sales calls. Um, you know, as far as taking on international clients goes, there's not much we need to do other than hosting their content. So we're happy to take on, on international clients. It's the it's the local clients where we would need to create their content that that you know serves the the biggest mission is to to go and do those sales calls. Nick, do you have a solid financial foundation, or how how do you finance uh, finance the whole enterprise? So currently, uh, very much self-funded and. Um, grassroots funded. So I've received some brilliant funding from uh, the Technology Innovation Agency in South Africa, um, the part of the grassroots platform. Um, so basically what they've done is they've sponsored me um, X amount to procure the equipment and to get the business going and to finish the app. And then I'm going into another round of funding now as well, as well as this big government project, which is, is in collaboration with that technology company, um, technology agency. 
um, they, that they would basically help me fund that government rollout. And once that government rollout um, happens, we can start using that as a means to start attracting more sales. And ultimately, then this entire business model should become self-sustainable. Self Nick, who, who is your competition? Is there uh, rivalry apps out there? Or who, is, who is the immediate competition? In South Africa, currently nothing. Um, I have come across one or two um, global or you know, international, um, I wouldn't say competitors, because I think we, we do service different markets. But there is a, a, a company called Signly in the UK that currently offers this. I think they offer it in the transport so, um, sector. As well as in Austria, I think there's a company called SignTime um, that does something similar, but not quite the same. So I would love to collaborate with both these companies because that we all offer, we all have the same objective, but we offer these, these services in different ways. And I feel that, you know, my, my platform could serve as the underpinning technology. And then these other, these other companies could potentially have their, their, their content created and hosted on my platform. Yeah, we can certainly facilitate to, to contact with Scientum. This was the gentleman chairing uh, in the in, in the morning session, and we're yes, more than happy yes. to to follow up on this one. Um, Thank you. Is is international growth also a, a, an immediate objective, or is it like a, a second or, or third step you would envision? Um, probably, I would have to allow this thing to grow organically. So probably a second or third step. You know, I have to prove value. I think in South Africa first, or prove value internationally if there are if there is international demand and use that international demand to feed success in South Africa. I suppose it all just depends on where the, the most demand comes from. Uh, South Africa, as I've said, is not necessarily as mature as the rest of the world when it comes to accessibility. Um, and driving that change here might be a lot more difficult than driving it internationally. So if there is international interest, then I would happily refocus and look at the international market. Um, but we do have this, this project that we're busy working on at the moment for that we're, we're currently negotiating. And if that comes off, then that would take up a large chunk of our time. And that would be a great project to then pilot the system with and test that market adoption. The Christmas is over since, since a while, but uh, wish list, what would you wish for, for the future, you know, connection wise, money wise, growth wise? Whew, that's a lovely question to ask. Um, I, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, immediate uh, future, I would really look for some sort of funding to to enable this thing to really run on its own without the need for, you know, me to go and and have a job, for instance, um, to be able to focus on this 100% full time and give it everything I have. And then from there to start garnering that growth, you know, so finding clients, um, finding rollout partners, endorsement partners, uh, if I could get my hands on the right network, you know, then there's nothing that stops us from going live. I mean, the application and the platform is there. It is 100% scalable as it is right now. I have a lovely roadmap that I would like to start in enabling at some point, but I need to first get some business going and, and, and start getting the interest around this application. And once we have that, we can start seeing what the demand is and then, you know, take it from there. Nick, everything is driven by, by personnel and uh, IT resources are scarce all over the world. How, how do you find the right people? So, networking. <laughs> um, in South Africa, you know, I've built lovely relationships with, with the right people, thank goodness. Um, and I've used those relationships to, to secure my value chain within South Africa. Um, as far as technology goes, luckily I come from a tech background, which really helps me um, in, in, in addressing the right need and, and architecting this, this entire platform the correct way um, and then building it myself as well. So I'm not dependent on, you know, on expensive developers to come in. At some point, I would like to be able to hand the development work over. But for now, I can keep it fairly cheap and do it myself. Um, so right now we have everything we need. When it comes to networking in, in the international space, that's exactly what Zero Project, you know, is, is here for. Um, and that's what I would hope for from a platform like this. There's so many people trying to achieve great things. I think if we all work together, we can achieve brilliant, brilliant things. All right, Nick, our time is almost up. Thank you much for, for joining us twice this day. Uh, and please follow the, the Zero Project Conference. Uh, thank you for watching. Please keep tuned to the Zero Project Conference. We are broadcasting live from the UN here in Vienna. Thank you. Thank you, Wilfred.